Hey there, everybody. I am Tynan Sylvester, and this is Wimworld Alpha 6. Let's take a look at what we got going this month. You may notice that the main menu looks a little bit different. That is because now creating worlds and creating colonies are separate operations. You can create a world and uh, have several different colonies in it. So here's the create world screen. The world creation process is driven by a seed, so you can get the same world every time if you use the same seed, and uh, so can your friends, so you can share worlds this way. Here I'm just gonna put in Tynan as the uh, seed here. So here is the world that is based on my name. It's an island, it's uh, got uh, all the different biomes, although a very small amount of desert in this case. You can see at the bottom you got the jungle in the dark green. You got arid shrubland, which is what you're used to, and was the only biome before in the uh, brown areas. The lighter green is temperate forest, and then uh, you have boreal forest, which is the darker turquoise, tundra, which is the lighter turquoise, desert, which is the yellow bit up there that, that I've selected here, and uh, as well as ice sheets. All these biomes are generated based on things like rainfall, elevation, temperature, which are generated with the world. So here's the elevation map, for example. You can see there's that's kind of a mountain there. So if you look at the rainfall map, uh, it varies randomly and with the elevation, and as well as the the temperature map. So you can see right there, there's that that mountain we were looking at, which is at lower temperature because of course temperatures are are lower at high altitudes. So all these different generated maps come together and interact and influence each other to produce the biomes that you can then choose from. Now currently only three of the bio biomes are actually implemented. That's the forest, the arid shrubland, and the desert. But of course we are going to implement them in future. Alpha 7 will definitely have jungle uh, and we're going to uh, try to get the others in as soon as possible. Because we want to produce like a really, really diverse set of experiences. For a long time I've just been trying to get to the, the game to the point where it's actually fun to play through to some kind of logical finishing point with the colony. And I think now that's been pretty well established, I'm, I'm hearing a lot about people playing multiple colonies, so uh, I'm getting more interested in replayability, which means setting people up in different circumstances, and specifically in different biomes. And, and so each biome plays a little bit differently. And some are more and less difficult. I mean, temperate forest is obviously going to be one of the easier ones, and desert is, is pretty tricky because there's very little arable land, uh, there's, there's not a lot to hunt unless you like eating beetle meat and iguanas. Um, and uh, arid shrubland is, is kind of in the middle. So yeah, now let's actually make a colony on that planet that I just generated. Here's a new storyteller selection screen. It's actually been split up. It used to be you just choose the storyteller, but now you get to choose the storyteller and the difficulty separately. So the storyteller determines what the algorithm is of the events, uh, like the timing and, and what game um, you know, situations will affect them. And then the challenge scale there just multiplies the difficulty of threatening events. So, you know, you choose Randy random in casual mode and you're gonna get randomly sized attacks at random intervals, but they're never gonna be huge. They're gonna be pretty small. If you choose him at extreme challenge mode, you're gonna get the same attacks in the same kind of random intervals, but now they're just gonna be proportionally much, much larger. So here's the select world uh, option. I'm just gonna choose the world that I generated before. There it is again. And then we choose our landing site. So here you're in the drop pod, you're trying to choose where you're gonna land on this planet to try to survive. So I'm just gonna choose a nice temperate forest spot in the northwest part of that inland sea there on the coast there and select it. All right, so here we are on our temperate world. And let's just take a quick look around as our guys land and get set up. And you're gonna notice that there's a little coastline here as there was on the world map, as well as some uh, innocent cuddly waddly deer ready to get exploded or hunted or caught in crossfires between you and deadly mechanoid attackers. So, uh, yeah, coastlines and we got ponds surrounded by mud that'll slow people down and uh, they all just add a little bit of interest to the environment. So, I'm just skipping ahead a little, a little here. Uh, we have a new medical system in the game that I want to show you. Instead of people just having health points like they used to have before, now we're actually tracking every injury on every body part and how it affects people's ability to do different stuff like consciousness, sight, hearing, moving, working, etc. So, just to test this out, let's get Cross here to shoot poor Big Red and then we can observe that Big Red's right arm has a pistol shot in it and that's affecting his ability to do work. We shoot him again, 
Now he's got a shot. Oh, it actually nicked his heart. Went through his torso and nicked his heart. So his blood pumping ability is poor. And he's in a medium amount of pain, which is probably quite a bit of pain. However, it's enough, uh, it's low enough that he can still walk around and do stuff. So we can just do different types of damage. Here, I'll strike him with lightning and now he's taking burns. So he's got a burn on his torso and on his neck. So uh, Big Red is, is, is getting into trouble here. So now let's just quickly uh, put these fires out so I can show you how the treatment system works. Because people don't just heal up in their beds the way they used to. Now you actually have medicine and doctors and doctor skill and, and so on and so forth. So here we'll set that as a medical bed and then uh, let Big Red go and he'll get into it. And now let's see who's, who's our doctor gonna be. We're gonna check Cross is set as the doctor of the colony. So we'll release him from drafting and then he's gonna notice that he shot Big Red and Big Red is uh, bleeding out. So he's gonna go get some medicine from the stockpile and bring it back to treat his wounds. So there's Big Red, he's got his blood loss. And if you just leave him, he will eventually bleed out and die from these wounds. So luckily he's getting treated by Cross. And uh, Cross is apparently a good doctor because he managed to uh, give a good quality treatment to some of those wounds. So now they're sutured and bandaged and they'll, they'll heal up properly. Um, but on his second attempt to heal the other wounds, it looks like he failed. And so they ended up poorly bandaged. What that means is that uh, they're gonna heal worse and they may actually heal into permanent injuries, which never go away. Um, and that's because Cross's medical skill is apparently only six. If he had been a better doctor, he probably would have uh, bandaged everything properly. And Big Red wouldn't be at risk of ending up with permanent injuries that could never, um, never be fixed. And uh, yeah, so there's, that's the, the medical system. Uh, you're gonna end up with, over time, people will develop more permanent injuries if they're not healed. So, you know, it's up to you what you wanna do with a colonist who's missing a leg and can't walk, or, you know, your doctor who's blind, and so who probably, even though he's really skilled, you know, if he gets shot in the eye, gets his eyes burned out or something like that in a fire, he's not gonna be very good at doing surgery at that point. And eyes, at this point, cannot be repaired no matter how good your medical system or medical skill is. Uh, yeah, this applies to all animals and creatures in the game. So let's just blow up some deer here. Let's see, he's got shredded, shredded legs. This one's, you know, rear right hoof is torn off and he's got a crack in his bones and stuff like that. So, you know, the same injury won't always lead to the same results. Depending on which body part it hits, it could cause instant incapacitation or even death. If people get hit in the brain or the heart by a gunshot. Um, or it could lead to, you know, relatively minor problems, you know? It's like you get shot and you get your pinky finger blown off. Yeah, it hurts, but it's not really gonna cause a serious issue. And every character has a different body model as well. So you notice the uh, scythers there had their thoraxes injured. All human characters don't have thoraxes and so on and so forth. So that's RimWorld Alpha 6. I hope you guys like it. Uh, aside from everything I've mentioned here, we've also got hot new music from Alistair Lindsay. We've got a ton of balance changes and bug fixes. And, uh, you know, we, we're, we're setting the stage for further awesome epic developments in the future. So I hope you guys like it. Check the mods forum uh, for new mods that people have created because there's a lot of awesome stuff out there in terms of modding it for RimWorld. And uh, yeah, I tweet at Tyne and Sylvester and you can check out the game at rimworldgame.com. All right, thanks and I'll see you guys later.